forgot how to film horizontal horizontally. And I hope that you can hear me. I know I don't really have the best mic right now. Uh, well, I don't have my mic with me, so the audio is gonna be a little bit different than voiceover that I'm gonna do for this video. Uh, okay, so just for reference, this is editing voiceover version that I will be using throughout the video over top of my video. I guess I'll just, I'll just sit back here. This video will consist behind the scenes of my painting maroon and a little bit more into my process, the voiceover in the background. There's my paint set up here. So the majority of it was done here. And then whenever I went home for the holidays, I did take it home with me, so. Okay, so this is what you usually see with my videos, a quick under a minute <laughs> reveal. This is the reality of my process. So this was me having some coffee and getting ready to open this canvas. This is honestly my favorite part of my process is like the beginning emotions of me knowing what I really want to create and watching it go from this blank blankness to inevitably the final Evelyn Hugo. I wanted this clip to be really dramatic, but when I edit it, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna edit it. Really cool. But I love ripping the canvas plastic off. I think it's it's something that I've incorporated into my videos too. And then I realized, oh wait, I got the clip, but I actually wanna, you know, have it on the wall to paint because when I start, I like to have it completely vertical, you know, completely. Cause sometimes when it's on the easel, it's a little bit slanted and for me i like to like stand up look at it move back so i prefer to have it nailed but i didn't have a hammer so i was using this wrench and i placed the canvas on the i said ceiling and then i placed the canvas on and was just kind of adjusting the camera that's something that i have to always do knowing that i'm you know documenting it so i'm always moving the camera around on my tripod, just trying to get different angles. For my process, I don't usually do drawings beforehand. I usually have an idea, I use the reference, create the reference, and then work off of that. But I wanted to have like a thumbnail of just the basic composition. This is where the figure will be and just go off of that. And now I'm starting the underpainting. I like to do a basic underpainting just to get the values right. I did use a grid to get the basic shapes and to know where everything was, just because it's such a huge painting, I didn't want something to be in the wrong place. So I don't use pencil when I sketch it on though, I usually just go straight in with paint, just because I don't like when the graphite bleeds underneath the first layer of paint. And this is probably the longest, most tedious part is just getting everything in the right position. The rest is fun. Those are my maroon colored nails that I got done in my maroon shirt. I'm very method when I do things. I feel like I, um, at least with my color coordinated painting outfits, I'm wearing a green shirt while I'm painting the screen too. But this was just me laying in the base layer and then I flipped it. I always flip my canvases upside down, to the right, to the left, it doesn't really matter. I just like to get different angles so that I'm not looking at it the same way. And this was me just kind of taking it all in and stepping back and trying to gauge like how this would actually work. Because again, even with my references, I don't really, I go off of them, but then I stray and I kind of have my own way of looking at it and the flowers specifically. I really make that part up. I really try and imagine what that would look like. And then here's me adding a whole new palette 
of colors. I was really wanting to get into the reds. I couldn't help myself. It's like, I need to get into these maroon shades. So I'm putting those colors on the palette paper right now. And this underpainting was dry at this point. So I was just starting to really add the color in. This is my favorite part. It's really layering in and starting to find where the true colors will shine through the underpainting. Because basically the underpainting is just the structure. It's where everything else lays and it's just kind of like the skeleton of the painting. And this is the fun part is adding the true coloring. I had a notification on my watch of something. I couldn't really read it either. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. I was just getting into the wine spill and I wanted the wine to come up above the glass a little bit like it's right in between pouring out and it's in that fluid motion of it rising up. The hands were definitely a challenge for me because they're something I really want to focus on. I totally came in for this shot and ended up messing it up and having to wipe it off. It's a struggle of trying to get the perfect shot. I never do too much damage when I do that. But the hands were something I really wanted to focus on for this piece. It's been something I've focused on in my painting practice for the past two years now. It's something I'm continuing to want to really improve on. There's just something about a hand, it, I mean, hand gestures, body language, it can often speak so much louder than any facial expression can. And then this is when I took my painting home for the holidays. That's my dog, Rosie. Here's me in my parents' house, painting, and I'm pretty sure there's football in the background because my brother was watching it. So it really wasn't the right energy for me to paint this sapphic painting, but I always like to travel with my work and work on something. I was painting it upside down. So then I started painting back in my studio after Christmas break and I really was getting into it. Here's me oiling out some of the areas that have dried. Basically to oil out you just have to rub some medium on the piece. And these maroon colors were so fun to work with. I really love the reds and the browns. It was a very different color palette that I'm used to, but I'm definitely going to work with reds a lot. Here's me with a palette knife in my mouth because you just never have enough hands to work with. Um, and then this was the clip that I used for the, the book. I wanted it to be like a cool, cool page turning vibe. And of course my headphones that I wear all the time. Oiling out again, but it looks really cool, I thought. And I don't know what I was listening to there. Just adding some more layers. The thorns were one of my favorite aspects of this piece, and they were a fun little thing that I thought of midway. Like, it just came up during the process, which is something that I love when I don't have initially that idea to do it, but I was like, thorns make so much sense here. And it just kind of clicks. And then I was not sure, like, I, I don't know, when is, an, when is a piece really done? You just kind of have this feeling, at least for me. And um, I did look at it for a while, not just for that clip. I wanted a cool clip of me picking a brush up. I decided I did need more impasto, so I added more to the canvas. These This was a really fun part of it, was adding all those reds and how the petals kind of turned into these energetic blobs. Adding some final touches on dress with a big brush and I'm an Aquarius, I feel like we talk to ourselves, so that's what I was doing <laughs> here, trying to decide again, you know, what looked right or you just at the end of the process I don't look at the reference and I just kind of have an intuitive feeling about how something should look or how a light should bounce off a shoulder, you know, simple things like that. You just kind of intuitively go with it. 
And here's some of the details, the Empire State Building, which was a detail I really wanted to highlight. The hand, wine, the greens with the reds. And here's my first clip that I added to my video and me touching up certain areas, checking them out. There's a lot of like pondering in the process. And now I will sign it and add varnish to the final and let it completely dry. What I really love to hone in on is representation specifically with queer women. And um, if you'd like a print, I do have prints. I have 8x10, 1114, and 1218. These are paper. I also do canvas prints. That was a slight promo for my prints. If you are interested, check out my print shop. I do have prints available, haleytourist.com, and I do have a merch shop. But I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes, a little bit more into my process and what it looks like outside of my TikTok videos. Yes. Let me just get up like a little bit closer. Okay. Yes. That was so good.